Welcome to the Business Owner Spotlight Series. My name is Gabriel Moore. I am the senior partner and head coach here at Action Coach Vanguard Business Coaching in Central Iowa. Today, I have U Mekse, the owner of Dreamscape Home Builders, as my guest. We're going to be talking about his business, journey to business ownership, challenges, best practices, and share a peek into what it's really like to build and operate a business. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations just like this one. Ooh, welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. And the only thing I can tell you is um, not only am I one of the uh, founders and owners of Dreamscape Home Builders, but I've also been very uh, fortunate to be a, an owner, broker, owner of Remax Concepts, which is a uh, real estate brokerage, um, primarily in the state of Iowa, but we do have an office in, in Florida. Oh, That's I, outstanding. I well, tell me a little bit about Dreamscape Builders. Sure. Um, so I went to Iowa State and wanted to become an architect. And I was uh, barely 18 at the time. And I let a college advisor talk me out of going into architecture school. And, okay. You know, it's prestigious. You know, architecture is prestigious. Yeah, I thought so. And I, I just always have loved drawing. I'm an artist at heart. I'm very creative and uh, love using, you know, the right side of my brain. And she said, you know, um, to become an architect, it's hard to get in. It's a very long pro uh, program and you don't make very much. And I was like, oh, okay. I just listened to her and I went ahead and uh, chose an, a major that was opposite of um, my natural uh, skill, which uh, was finance. And sure enough, I <laughs> got a business degree and I became a financial advisor and I uh, worked at the principal financial group. And um, I, I actually, honestly love my job. It was very like, uh, very much like Boiler Room. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Where oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Up and right, and people are calling you and you're investing. You know, sometimes it was a few thousand and sometimes it was a, it was a few million. And mm -hmm. um, I love that job as a, as a starting kind of a career uh, in the real world. But after a while, you know, you you work hard and, you know, I got bonuses and commission. But after a while, you just kind of find yourself not getting paid the the uh, the return uh, for your time and your energy. And right. all my coworkers were watching the stock market. And here I was looking at floor plan websites, real estate websites. And okay. I always uh, dreamed about becoming a builder and a developer. And sure enough, I quit my job and had a little bit of a stint in between um, uh, real estate, but I got my real estate license. And the reason why I got my license was I thought that would be the best way to learn about new construction, learn about development. Okay. You know, learn, learn it from a sales standpoint because- They are pretty collaborative, right? Real estate and, uh, and building. I mean, they're not too far apart. Not at all. And, uh, you know, I when I was in out at, <clears throat> Iowa State, I actually had- um, Sit, sat in front of a, a real estate uh, broker and he told me all about or he told the class I should say all about real estate and that was very intriguing and I guess the biggest thing Gabriel is uh, my wife and I we uh, not only uh, bought a first house we, we built our first house and I fell in love with that process you know we were able to pick this lot and it backed up to a lake and some trees and we picked the floor plan we picked the style the finishes and that was awesome I mean I was in love from the first day we started that and then at the closing table I um, saw we called them a HUD statements back then. I don't know if you've seen those yourself personally, but pretty much shows the buyer side and the seller side, and it yeah. showed on the buyer side how much um, uh, my my agent made and how much the builder made. I was like, wow. I was like, they had that much fun and they made that much money. And um, <laughs> what a good perspective. Yeah, and I told I told my agent at the time her name was Sandy. I said, hey Sandy, what do you think about me? Um, you know, becoming an agent. She said, Ooh, you know, I, I think you'd be great. And sure enough, I got my real estate license. I was pretty successful. I became rookie of the year for my brokerage and the, the uh, MLS wow. association overall. And to the point where um, I uh, found a new passion and that passion was to mentor and coach other agents. And I, we kind of talked about this yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so that led me to get kind of some offers of ownership and management. And sure enough, in 2010, I was offered by two, two of the biggest brokerages in the Des Moines area ownership. And I chose one, which was Remax Concepts. And that same year, I uh, officially launched my home building company. I found a partner a couple of years prior and him and I hit it off. And I said, hey, man, this is kind of my dream, my goals, my vision. And him and I saw eye to eye. And and so in 2010, I became a, a, a mentor and a coach and a uh, I, I actually made a deal with my um, my broker at the time. I said, hey, if I come over, the deal is um, the next office that becomes available for ownership, it's mine. And we did a, a looky in the eye handshake deal. And, and that's, <laughs> how we got, that's how we got started. Those handshake deals are always the best. Tell us 
Tell us a little bit about what role you currently play in the business. Yeah, so I, I am a still owner operator of um, Dreamscape Home Builders. I do have two partners, so they call me the dreamer. I'm the one that gets the chance to meet with our clients, understand their needs, their wants, their budget, of course, their location. So I pretty much, you know, tee it all up on paper, in my mind, okay. my vision with the clients. And then I have a partner that draws the blueprints. And he does our pricing and I have a partner that does the build and, you know, these hands don't uh, really build too much. I just more of a, I'm a, I'm a okay project manager slash coordinator and I can bring people together and, and go from there. So I do that about half of my day and my other half of my day is um, kind of a uh, ministry slash uh, passion of mine, which is helping agents. So we've okay. got you know, just, just shy of 500 agents and uh, employees. And I don't do very much with our employees because we've got an awesome uh, leadership team, but I do a lot of coaching, one-on-one -on -one stuff, group stuff, and really just Very try good. To, to how to, you know, help them grow their business and in turn us, you know, add systems and, and other uh, value ideas, campaigns that really just allow them to grow and be the best agent they can be. So tell me about your partnership then, because, you know, being a partner with two other partners, there's a lot of businesses out there that have partnerships that are, are not congruent they're not uh conducive to each other and what does that look like with yours and if it is successful what do you think what do you think the magic what do you think the magic is um you know i think it's a lot of divine heavenly magic to be honest with you um for me i was just very lucky um you know and in any relationship right no one's perfect i'm not perfect uh, perfect and many people have different types of personalities right and i didn't do a personality test with my partners they didn't do one on me i didn't do an enneagram test or a disc profile <laughs> by any means but early on we just really you know shared um a common objective common goals common core values um okay. common integrity um and just the way we operate, we're all, you know, I'm very blessed. I have two partners in the brokerage and two partners in the building company. And the key thing I, uh, we really got lucky about is, you know, my strengths may not be necessarily their strengths and their strengths definitely aren't, aren't my strengths, you know? Sure. And I, and I, I'll, I, I guess I had partners also that had different types of experience. Like, like I said earlier, one partner was a, a builder, uh, primarily had been a framer, uh, he had just done everything on a job site ever since he was 14. And the other partner had been uh, drawing blueprints ever since he was a kid. And and here I yes. am. I just The technical side seemed very appropriate. I mean, that you all brought that element in to bring this triangle of perfection. Um, that makes complete sense to me. But you did talk about personality and core values. And uh, we find that uh, core values plays an integral role in deciding on whether or not partnerships work and whether or not they don't. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so who does... Let's say, let's say I was an audience member for Dreamscapes. How, what do I look like? What is your target audience uh, for that company? Yeah. You know, the market's definitely um, had a, a, a huge uh, effect on who our a client looks like. But yeah. back in the day, you know, Gabriel, I used to say, you know, I call it the three P's, the people, the project, and the price. And the first was super important because I had to grow to love the people. I didn't want to build homes for somebody that was just there because I was the cheapest price per square right. foot. I was the fanciest designer. I wanted, you know, to build for someone that I could build a loving, trusting, long-term relationship with. And if I didn't like that's you, great. I, I don't want to build a house for you for six to seven months. And thankfully, you know, we interview uh, our clients just as much as they interview us. Yes. So that's the first thing. And then the project is we we get brought a lot of things. Can you build us a tiny home? Can you build us a, a log cabin? Can you build us this and that? And um, 80, 90% of the time we can build anything that someone brings to us, but there's sometimes that, you know, it's just not worth really, I shouldn't say worth, but it just isn't our, our, our primary passion or wheelhouse. And sure. so it's got to be the right project. And the third P is price. And really it's all about, you know, um, your, I tell our clients, your budget is our budget and I'll do my best to reverse engineer work backwards into that budget. So if they give me a bu budget of X hundred thousand, I have some formulas, I have some um, calculations that I put in and very quickly I can, you know, within the first five to 10, 15 minutes, figure out, okay, so Mr. and Mrs. Buyer or Gabriel in this matter, you know, mm -hmm. your budget is X hundred thousand. I'm going to suggest that, you know, we earmark about 20% of that for the land and the lot development costs. And then based on the 
other clients that we've uh, worked with, you know, we need some contingency money for, for upgrades and, mm -hmm. and things like that. That might be 5,000 or it might be 50,000, depending on the level of the, of the home. And then from there, I ask them, you know, back to those needs and wants, I say, okay, do you need or want a basement to be finished? And then I can sure. back out of the budget. And then from there, I'm left with, you know, a few hundred thousand bucks. And we've got these multipliers that we've calculated uh, based off of other clients. So it's kind of a compound effect, Gabriel, where we use recent bids, quotes, pricing. We have sure. Almost really like a comparison to the back. Yeah. And then, you know, another thing, too, that you mentioned uh, in your in your industry specifically, um, you know, in, in the end, customer has control over the price with whether or not they buy, right? I mean, if they buy it, they like the price. They don't buy it, they don't like the price. They have far more control in a situation like yours because you start with a budgeted price, right? Where they actually get to control a lot of the elements or at least the quality of the elements inside of the build. And it gives them, it get it. Do, do you position that? Like it gives them far more control over, over how much it costs essentially because they have the choice of what to put in, what not to put in? Absolutely. We try to be as transparent as possible with our pricing and what what standard in our homes, you know, a nine foot basement, two by six framing, spray right. foam insulation around the big box sills and rim joists and the type mm -hmm. of windows and materials for just everything. And so we're very upfront because I, I um, really don't want to sign a contract with a client that doesn't know exactly what they're getting. Because back to sure. me, being an agent, I did start with some great builders. Um, I represented them, you know, two weeks after I got my license, I represented you know, the, one of the largest builders in the state of Iowa. So I learned a lot from them and I definitely didn't take anything proprietary. I was able to create my own system, my own process. And then knowing that I built my own house um, and have helped hundreds of other clients build their homes before I started my own home building company, I really crafted it to be very uh, customer focused. And sure. so that being said, you know, we don't charge change orders. We don't make them, you know, be with their agent to go tour through the house. We give them a, con a code to the contractor's box and every dollar every cent we are transparent with we have spreadsheets that we say okay this is your allowance for cabinets flooring very good this is what you actually spent this is your different and they sign off on everything too and then we just tally how that does up. that oh if i may <clears throat> how does that organization help your company how does that organization where you're tracking these things and you are um because so, some people might look at that as robotic how is that valuable to your company to be able to stay on top of tracking those things? You know, it's everything. Having systems, you know, having just um, just complete like organization. And we're very uh, tech savvy. We have, you know, a third party prop, uh, building software uh, that okay. we use. Uh, we're cloud based. We use a lot of Google products mm -hmm. and we simplify things. So we have, uh, you know, I always tell our clients, you know, there's going to be almost 400 things that my team, myself and my partners and our, uh, our employees and our subcontractors and vendors will be responsible for. And of those people, there's about a hundred people that will have some sort of part in the process of building your home, whether it's your sure. person, you know, hands on paperwork all the way to our cleaners. And so our job is to, you know, um, you know, get everybody on the same page with the right information, communication, and uh, just go from there and just really setting the right expectations. They ask me, you know, how, how long does it take to build? And, you know, I have answers for 